Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So today I'm answering some questions that have often been asked by you guys, my viewers, and that is, how do we clean the tools and equipment when we're done detailing our vehicle? So I'm gonna go over many topics. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the round of my garage with you guys, and we're gonna move from station to station, and I'm gonna show you how I deep clean things uh, like polishing pads, uh, the buckets, the buckets, bucket filters, the um, pressure washers, of course, if you have a deionizer system or water softener system, uh, car dryers, uh, things like the foam cannon, uh, sprayers, spray bottles, what kind of all-purpose cleaners do I use, uh, how do we clean the microfiber towels, of course, how we also clean brushes and things of that nature. Uh, what about the equipment? So some of you guys might have steam cleaners or a uh, shop vac, so um, wet and dry vacuum. Uh, also things like a carpet extractor, uh, some more brushes and things like that. So basically we're gonna go around and I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. By the way, I'm gonna leave links to any tools, products or equipment that I discussed today in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax and enjoy the show. And also at the end of this video, when you're done uh, with all my tips and tricks, let me know if there's anything else that you guys do to clean your towels or your brushes or whatever equipment or tools that you guys have. It's always cool to share that with the Pan the Organizer community so everybody uh, can read and see. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go over the stations and uh, I'll even give you some tips and tricks for things like the uh, garage door. If you work in your garage, how to take care of that or how to maintain that. Uh, even things like your dehumidifier and your heat pump, if you have that or AC in your garage and uh, just basic, uh, an overview of everything that I do. By the way, I have specific videos for every single one of the things I'll be talking about today. So if you want to dive deeper and of course, see all the demos. I'll leave the links to all the individual videos in the description under this video. So again, you guys can check them out, uh, whatever you guys choose after this video. Uh, by the way, I hope you guys can see uh, my Porsche is disgusting. It's the middle of winter here. We're already at minus six degrees Fahrenheit or minus 20 or 21 degrees Celsius uh, road salts. It, it's just disgusting. It's a mess. I hate winter. I don't know if you guys are like me. Uh, if you hate winter, <laughs> drop a comment to let me know. Uh, all right, so let's start on this side. First First of all, things like your polishers. Is there anything that you do when you're done polishing your vehicle? Well, you can give a quick wipe down. So you're gonna take a microfiber towel, uh, maybe a light APC, uh, or something like uh, ONR or McKee's 37N914 or rinseless wash and just give a quick wipe. That's pretty much all you need because if you do regular maintenance, they should look clean all the time. But the key thing when you're done polishing is of course taking care of your polishing pads. And how would you do that? Well, there are a few methods. Uh, once again, I have tutorials on these individually uh, on my channel, but what I do, you can either clean them by hand. So the cheapest and most efficient method is to use something like this McKee's 37 polishing pad cleaner. So you spray on the face of the pad, you're gonna let that dwell a few minutes and then you're gonna work the product onto the face of the pad and then rinse it off. Uh, in warm water, maybe not hot water because you don't want the uh, the glue to remove off the backing plate of the pad itself. So either cold or lukewarm water is fine. Uh, you thoroughly rinse that off. You're going to twist it a bit in your sink and then I let them dry face down on a uh, paper towel like this to absorb any humidity. If you want to go a step further, you can get polishing pad cleaner setups. So I did a dedicated video on this one. This is a Lake Country System 4000 uh, pad washer. So it's good for wool, microfiber, foam, whatever you guys have. Basically with your machine and the pad on it, what you do, there's a solution in there, a cleaning solution, and then it's pump activated. So it's going to pump clean and filtered water onto the pad itself. And then as you're spinning the pad with the machine, there's these ridges and uh, these rivets here that help to clean the pad itself. You're going to lift it off a bit, continue spinning for the liquid to go off, and then you have a super clean pad. So you can check that video out. And there's also another system. This is by the Detail Guards, and this is their polishing pad cleaning setup. Basically, in the bottom of your wash bucket, 
when you have the uh, Detail Guards Dirt Lock Bucket Filter. So this is a dirt trap that goes in the bottom of your bucket, right? Uh, as you can see here. So this is to trap all the dirt and all the junk in the bottom of the bucket so you can have a clean wash solution. Well, on this Dirt Lock Filter, there are many attachments that you can add, like the Scrub and Pump. So this is gonna release any dirt that you have in your mitts when you're washing. But you can also attach the uh, pumping system or the cleaning polishing pad cleaning system like this. So this pump system you attach on top of your uh, dirt lock and what it does, it's going to add a pumping mechanism to shoot liquid onto your pad. You're going to attach the pad on this uh, gadget that they have here, this kind of handle. It attaches easily and they also have their polishing pad spray cleaner and you basically spray a little bit on the pad itself. Going to attach the pad onto here and in your bucket, you're basically doing a mechanical action. And then after a few seconds, you're gonna take it off and lay it flat, face down on a paper towel or a microfiber drying towel, that kind of stuff. And it's gonna to help to uh, clean your pads. Again, I have demos on this too on my channel. The links will be in the description. So let's go back to where we were so that you, it's very important to clean your pads. I do so every time I'm done a uh, detailing job or a polishing job. That way I keep my tools fresh and ready to go for the next time. Uh, I don't like to accumulate things because you never know if the uh, dirt and crud in that pad will eventually be uh, too caked in and harder to remove. So I like to clean everything when I'm done a detailing job. Next, if you guys have a car dryer, usually they have hot and filter air right that they push to dry your vehicle whether you have the metrovac master blaster revolution or this one here the big Bl uh, big boy blower r pro by the way this is not a sponsored video nobody paid for this video i'm just giving you these tips just a quick disclaimer uh so a unit like this typically will have air filters so if you remove the screws on top for regular maintenance you got to make sure that the thing is breathing properly right so you have this kind of plate and then you have access to the filters. In this case, they're washable and reusable. So you would go ahead and pull that off and you can see there's a bit of dirt there. It, it does its job because it filters. So you can wash that, uh, let it dry and then reuse it. You're simply going to put it back as so and then reattach it and you're good to go. So if you want to have top performing units, obviously it's like a car's air, air filter for the engine, right? You don't want that to get clogged over time. So you would go ahead and clean that off and make sure your unit is performing as it should at all times. So that's one thing you can do for your car dryer. Next, we move on to uh, sprayers, pump sprayers, all that kind of stuff. When you're using them to dilute products, that's perfect, right? Because they help you uh, be more economical and more efficient because you're typically diluting the products in there so a little goes a long way uh, but when you're done or if you want to switch the solution that's in there for something else what do you do well very simple once it's empty for like your spray bottles for example if they're empty or if you have a uh, pump sprayer what i like to do is fill them up up with a bit of lukewarm water and i will go through it so i'll activate the uh, sprayer for a couple of shots, like to at least clear out a third of the bottle with some uh, clear and clean lukewarm water. And that's gonna help clean the tip and also the sprayer head itself. So there's nothing contained in there that will stay over time. And the same with pump sprayers. So I would add lukewarm water in there and then just activate the pump, spray it out and let it go for a few seconds to make sure you're clearing all that stuff with the previous chemical before you add a new chemical in there. That way you're not getting cross contamination of your chemicals when you're using them. Okay. What do we have next? So we're gonna have some uh, detailing tools that we need to clean, right? So if I look at here, for example, this is a tray that I like to have with all my detailing brushes that are well organized for different uses, whether it's the exterior, whether it's the interior and that kind of stuff. You have brushes for your tires, brushes for leather, like these guys here as well. Uh, these, again, as I said, interior brushes, you have some small ones that are good for air vents and all that kind of stuff. And I also have an assortment of uh, brushes right here so these work stuff brushes and these uh, easy detail brushes uh, the microfiber madness brushes basically all sorts of brushes that you use for all kinds of things whether it's tires wheels and that kind of stuff so you got to clean them right so immediately when i'm done the detailing jobs what i do is i come to my sink i'm going to rinse them out and then i'm going to take a bucket i'm going to add a bit of all-purpose cleaner in there 
with some water, lukewarm water, again, that usually helps, or warm water, and then fill that up and just dunk all those brushes inside there and let them soak overnight to make sure they break down any grease, dirt, and grime that is on there. And the next day I simply rinse them off again in the sink and then I'll let them air dry on a paper towel or on a microfiber towel, however you guys want. That way they're always clean and ready to go for the next job. So as you can see here, I like to keep my uh, brushes very clean. That's very important. Now for the all-purpose cleaners that I like to use, there's many of them, right? I have tons on my shelves, uh, but these ones I particularly like for cleaning tools because they also can be purchased in bigger sizes that you can dilute. Uh, so for example, in this bottle here, I have the the Koch Kemi or Koch Kemi uh, from Germany, the Green Star. So this is their all-purpose cleaner that you can dilute. This is a pH level of 12 and a half. And in the back, they give you a few of the uh, dilutions uh, to dilution ratios that they recommend. So typically one to five or one to 10 or 10 to one or five to one is what I like to use. Like this one here, this is my uh, five to one dilution. So you can use that to spray or you uh, can put it into the bucket directly with a bit of water and then use that as a pre-soak for your brushes. Uh, another one that's very good is Optimum Power Clean. Again, the dilutions are on the bottle itself but uh, five to one or three to one to clean those brushes is very good. So you can have it in a sprayer bottle or in a uh, gallon form. So these are inexpensive, high quality detailing uh, APCs, all-purpose cleaners. And uh, last but not least, we have the uh, multi-purpose Extra Tough. So this one here is uh, made in the US and you can have it, of course, in gallon sizes. Again, don't worry, all the links will be in the description under the, vi uh, the video. But this one here is readily biodegradable. So it's very safe to use. It doesn't have that caustic kickback or toxic fumes. None of these do, by the way. So they're very, very efficient at cutting down dirt, grime, crud, all that kind of stuff and getting your tools super clean. Uh, I also use these guys when you put them in uh, pump sprayers or sprayers, the all-purpose cleaners, to clean your buckets. So over time, you're going to notice that when you're done cleaning, the bare minimum that I like to do is to pull the filter out, right? So this again is the uh, dirt lock bucket filter with the pump and scrub attachment on top. So this is the pump system that shoots water when you're putting your mitt on it to help get it clean while you're washing. So in the bottom, you're gonna rinse that bucket off when you're done washing your car, dump the water and let the lid off so it can air dry. But eventually you're gonna accumulate some dirt and grime. So what I, I like to do is to spray APC all over, let it dwell for a few minutes, and then you can take a brush like this wheel brush here, and you're gonna brush all of the interior with your all-purpose cleaner and get that clean, right? So it is important to also keep your wash buckets clean. And when you're done cleaning with the all-purpose cleaner, you rinse off, you dunk the water out, and then you let everything air dry. So that is how I like to keep my buckets for the, uh, the filters themselves. So whether you have uh, things like this, this is the traditional uh, dirt trap, or if you have the uh, dirt lock from the detail guards. So what you do is just rinse them off. So when you're done washing your vehicle, pull them out of your buckets and then take either your pressure washer or your garden hose and just rinse them out both sides and you let them air dry and that's it. So you got to maintain your buckets in uh, tip top condition that way. So that's very important too. So what else do we have? If you have equipment, right? So typically you guys can have things like a steam cleaner with the main trick that I have. There's no much maintenance needed for this other than on the exterior, maybe wiping it down with a rinseless wash or an all-purpose cleaner to keep it clean. But the trick is on the inside. So this is the water reservoir right here. You add distilled water only, not your tap water because that contains minerals. And over time, those minerals can create deposits in there and it's just gonna gunk up the system and it's not gonna be as efficient. So only use demineralized or distilled water in your steam cleaner. Now, if you guys have a vacuum, and I'm assuming that you do, uh, like this rigid portable vac, this is the 4070 model. It's a wet and dry vac. There's always some type of filter inside there. So when you open it up, like we're gonna do here, and you look, 
So you have this filter, right? Well, this over time, it gets very, very dirty. Now, some of you guys might have filters that are washable and reusable. So you can pull the filter out. You're gonna use some lukewarm water with maybe a bit of APC or a bit of uh, dishwashing liquid even, and rinse that out, let it air dry once it's done cleaning and you reattach it and you're good to go. Or uh, like I like to do for this one is to simply replace it with a fresh unit. So I always try to keep a stock of fresh filters to go so you have your replacements and uh, you can uh, bump up the HEPA filtering layer so this one here I think the standard one is a level two or level three so I went for a level five which you can find out at your local hardware store and you get a fresh and clean one to start your new detailing season or if you see that the one you currently have is way too dirty uh, what some people also like to do is remove their filter just knock it outside to remove the majority of the dirt that's on there some like using Using uh, compressed air, I don't like to do that because you can break down the uh, filtering mesh there that's in there. Same thing for, for the cars, right? For the engine filters. Uh, people like sometimes to just blow some compressed air on there, but you could damage the filter. So do that at your own risk, but you can at least tap it outside and release the majority because look at that. Whew, there's a lot of dust and dirt. Now in your machine as well, what you can do is uh, first of all, remove all that crap that's in there, put that in a garbage bag, rinse it out with either your garden hose or a pressure washer. And then I'm gonna spray some all-purpose cleaner. Once again, we use that APCs for everything, right? Let that dwell and soak. And then you're gonna take a small brush, uh, perhaps something like this. And then you're just gonna agitate the entire thing, get all the nooks and crannies inside there, get that clean with the all-purpose cleaner, rinse off, let it air dry, and then you have a clean unit. So that is very, very simple to do. Make sure your air filter is reattached. You're gonna put the head back on there, clip it on, and then you're good to go. Now, if you did a lot of, um, picking up a lot of dirt, grime, or even some uh, dirty liquid, because this one here is a wet and dry vac. Sometimes the inner parts of the tube itself can, or the, uh, the hose can get very dirty. So what you can do is detach that hose right here. There you go. And then you put your pressure washer or garden hose in there and you flush out all that gunk through the other end. So just put some pressured water in there and it's just gonna flush all that stuff because already you can see, look at that, you see inside there? There's mud, dirt, and grime that accumulates. So imagine on the inside of this tube what it looks like. So when you're done flushing and once it's air dry, just reattach it and you're good to go. So always some quick maintenance tips. Now for your, uh, if you guys have a carpet extractor, you're gonna have some sort of solution in there to clean your carpets, right? So obviously with the uh, front system, when you're done filling it up with all that dirty, disgusting water, what I like to do is of course, remove all of that and then put back some warm water, just pure water in there with nothing else and run it through the system a bit just to clear everything up and then dunk again and then just let it air dry and you're good to go. So the maintenance is very minimal on this kind of stuff. So what else do we have here? Is there anything that needs maintenance? So we spoke about the brushes, the tools, the equipment. If you have some ear guards or ear protection, over time, there can be accumulation of a bit of um, some fat or some body oils on there. So just, you can wipe that down once again with your all purpose cleaner. This is the, the trick that we're always using. Always have some gloves. So these are some black nitrile gloves when you're detailing, protect your hands and when you're cleaning your stuff as well against all the chemicals. Next, we move on to foam cannons, right? That you attach to your pressure washer. So how do you take care of these? So when you're done, detailing your vehicle, you use this with your solution. What I like to do immediately is dump out all the remaining solution that's in there. And then you're gonna rinse it out with some warm water as uh, until there's no more soapy solution left. And then you refill with clean water. You're gonna put that back onto your cannon itself and you're gonna run it through your pressure washer once again. So you connect it to your pressure washer gun and run that clean water through the system for at least 30 seconds. What that does, this mechanism inside there, there's a lot of foam and plastic parts that distributes and makes the product foam. Well, over time, if you don't rinse this out, you're gonna clog the system and it won't be as efficient and it's gonna be a nightmare to try and replace all those internals or you might render your foam cannon useless if you can't replace those. So regular maintenance, I never 
never had to replace the filtering systems or the mesh or all that grills that are inside there uh, because I do regular maintenance. So after you're done washing your car, 30 seconds of clean, warm water in the system, let it air dry. So either on a microfiber towel, on a paper towel, or just on your table like that. And once it's dry, you reassemble it, you hang it, and it's good to go for the next time. So that's the quick tips for the foam cannons. Now, when we move to a filtering system like the uh, deionizer, so this is a water deionizer spotless system to have a spot free rinse. So usually for the final rinse of the vehicle, if you don't wanna have any water spots, if you have um, water that is very hard where you live with many mineral deposits, those water spots can etch through the clear coat and damage your clear coat. So you can have a system like this. So basically it gives you zero uh, parts per million of uh, minerals inside there because it filters through the filtering media. So make sure you have this TDS monitor, total dissolved solids. So once that meter is above zero or one, you're gonna have to change the pellets that are in there. So you're gonna unscrew it with the system. You're gonna replace that, make sure you're in tip top condition. And when you're done using the pressure washer on your vehicle to wash your car, make sure you empty out all of this by closing the tap and then just running your either garden hose or your pressure washer until there's no more water dripping out. So you wanna evacuate the remaining water that's in there. If you are using a garden hose, right? So this is my trusted Ely hose reels, garden hose, polyurethane, very high grade. So to keep this clean, well, every now and then it is very simple. When you're winding your, um, your garden hose up, Take a microfiber towel, wrap it around your hose, and as you're winding it, it's gonna clean the, uh, the rubber or the hose that you're using to keep that clean. And that's pretty simple. For your pressure washers, guys, it is important. When you have your wand like this, and you have a gun, so this is my Obsessed Garage Mosmatic Spec. So basically what I do is I disassemble the wand. I make sure there's no water uh, remaining in the wand itself. For the gun, I'll activate the trigger and then I'll make sure that all the water gets released as well. And then I can reattach it, make sure that there's no water in there. I let this uh, connector at the end towards the ground, of course, to any drippage that is left or any water that might be left to just run off. You're clean and tidy with your hoses when you uh, put them back. Same thing with the power connector or the power cords. Uh, same trick as for the garden hose. If you want to clean them up, when you're rewinding all that, um, when you're reeling that hose the, the hose back in, just put a towel on there, wrap it around your hand like that. And as you're reeling it in, well, you're going to clean the, uh, the rubber hose. And so you always have a unit that is good to go and very, very clean. Now, some uh, tips on some equipment that you guys might have, like the garage door. I made a full video. If you have a squeaky garage door, it's important to lubricate different things. So you can lubricate those springs on top, the hinges, the pulleys, uh, any metal on metal part. You see this kind of yellowish material. So that is the lubricant. So the rollers, it is very important that they keep on rolling properly. So that you're gonna lubricate all those hinges and metal on metal parts. Uh, same thing if you have the tracks, you wanna make sure everything is done to a T. So that way you're cutting down on noise, but also everything is gonna run much more smoothly. And what I like to do is use a lubricant that is specifically made for garage doors. So like this one here is by my local garage installer companies, but there are many out there uh, on the market. I'll leave some in the description under the video. So you wanna make sure you lubricate those. If you have a um, unit like this, so this is a heat pump. So I heat and cool my garage year round. You're gonna have some air filters in there. You gotta clean those regularly. So this is a ceiling mounted unit. So you pop up the front, clean your filters, put them back and you're good to go. You don't wanna impede the machine from breathing some air. Same thing, right, we did with the uh, car dryer. Uh, now I also have a dehumidifier. So this machine can help as well, but this is an added unit. This is a unit from Frigidaire. Uh, this is, is a 70 pint model. So this is a specific dehumidifier. It's much more powerful. Once again, there's a filter in the back that you're gonna pull out. Simply gonna rinse it off, let it dry, and you put it back and that way, 
Your machine can breathe properly. I sometimes clean the exterior if it gets too dirty because I use a lot of pressure washing in the garage. So you can have a uh, garage door that opens smoothly and noise free. Uh, you're going to have a dehumidifier that can uh, breathe properly and do its job. And same thing with your AC or heat pump if you want to continue heating and cooling your garage properly. So guys, I think I did pretty much the round. Oh yeah, the microfiber towels, right? So if you're like me, I have a lot of microfiber towels. Uh, this is just part of my collection. It's a never ending collection. I have some here, I have some here, I have some on this side, basically. I have more in my house, uh, but yeah, I just love microfibers. So that's the way to go. Same thing for wash mitts, right? You're gonna have microfiber wash mitts all over the place. So uh, this one here, microfiber madness uh, for Incredi Flare for the wheels and the Incredi Mitt for the, uh, the paintwork and more microfiber towels here. But basically to clean them, you're gonna, I have a dedicated video on how to clean microfiber towels on my channel, uh, but basically in a nutshell, you can use either warm or hot water or cold water for cleaning, but the key is when you're drying, do not use uh, hot air. That is key because you're gonna melt the fibers. This is made of polyester and polyamide, and if the temperature is too high, you're gonna melt them. So for washing, uh, usually cold is good enough. Uh, if you need, I use warm water. I try to avoid the hot water setting though, but warm is fine. And use a dedicated microfiber detergent. Yes, you can use the Tide Free or the All Clears, basically uh, detergents that are free of any dyes, any scents, any bleaches, and any fabric softeners that is key. Uh, and um, yeah, you can make sure you use those if you don't want to spend a little more. But for me, I like the um, PNS Rags to Riches. This is probably the best microfiber detergent that I ever used. Uh, it is very simple. It comes in this dispenser bottle, so you can calculate the amount you need. Either half an ounce or an ounce for a load is fine. You can even use this to pre-soak your very, very dirty uh, microfiber towels beforehand in a bucket with warm water. You're gonna add two ounces of this in your bucket, let those soak overnight, and then the next day you can put them in your washing machine and wash them with uh, another half ounce or ounce, depending on the size of your load of the rags to riches, and you're gonna get them nice and clean. Do not use any fabric softeners in your washer with microfiber towels, and no fabric softener sheets in the dryer, because you're gonna close the pores or the fibers of the towels and you're going to render them uh, inefficient or useless. So it is important to keep the static cling. Those microfibers are like fingers, right? They pick up the dirt. So do not coat those fibers by using fabric softeners. That's a big no-no. Once again, check my uh, tutorial on my channel for that. But uh, I wash the microfiber drying towels, microfiber towels for paint, the wash mitts, all that you can put in the same load. The ones I tried to wash separately is if you have any microfiber uh, cutting or polishing pads, right? Because those contain abrasives, I'll wash those separately. Or if you have any towels that are very dirty with oil and grease that you perhaps use on the engine bay, I'll wash those separately as well. If not, all the rest you can put in the, um, in the same wash process. Now, if you have any foam applicators, so like these guys here, I use to apply all my tire dressings. Normally what I do when I'm done using, I just lay them face down like this on an older microfiber towel to absorb any uh, dirt that's on there. Uh, but if you often switch um, tire dressings and you don't want cross-contamination or if they've been loaded up for a while now and you just wanna get them clean, once again, take a bucket, put some all-purpose cleaner inside there with warm water, dunk your um, tire dressing applicators inside there overnight. The next day, rinse them off, let them air dry, and they should be nice and fresh and ready to go. So guys, that's pretty much it. All the links of the uh, products, tools, and stuff that I spoke about, I'll leave in the description under this video. If you enjoyed this, smash the thumbs up button to show me your support. Don't forget, share this video with friends and family that might benefit from my tips and tricks. And also take a second and click the subscribe button. That way you'll subscribe to my channel, never miss my future videos. And also do me a favor, click on that bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a video to YouTube. So guys, thanks for being there. Thanks for watching watching. Uh, if you want to share any of your cleaning tips for tools and equipment, drop them in the comment section under the video. And in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you guys on the next one.